couldn't turn it on target. But what a what a little move that was. Vinicius Junior found short then as he drives it towards Patrick. I mean, there he is again. There he is again. Everton won. Napoli nil. Quite in possession here. And Fabian has a chance. Vice will save it. Get back up, please. Free Lembolo smashes it home. Torreira, Vinicius Jr. looking to get in behind him. Napoli, he's taking a touch. Referee and Hummels. Is he last man, ref? Is he the last man? That's my question to you. What are you going to be giving here then? This is a huge moment in the match. Just before half time, we've been very poor since we've got in front here, to be fair. And um, we've not been able to do too much else. And it's a straight red for Mats Hummels. And he will be in the hands of the Napoli goalkeeper. But I believe as, uh, as soon as he kicks this off, it will be us into the semi-finals of the Champions League. Hello everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another Career Mode episode today. Hopefully you're having a good day. It's about to get even better as we bring you the semi-finals of the Champions League against AS Monaco, who have got two of the top scorers in the competition. So this is going to be no easy feat today. But in between that, we also take on Leicester. And there's only three games today. That's because it's pretty much a formality that we're going to be winning the, the title in this episode. So, of course, the two Champions League games and that Leicester game coming up. If we show you the table, um, United, as you saw, are 12 points behind and they have to win their game in hand in order to uh, to keep up with us. So, yeah, um, 12 points. If they fail to win that, we will be champions, of course, if, uh, if required. We'll only need a point against Leicester later on in the episode to win it as well. So they play on the same day as us. So we will hopefully be able to see us lift the trophy anyway in that game. Nevertheless, though, it's time for our first game of the day. We're going to jump straight into it. Semi-finals of the Champions League. AS Monaco, our opponents. I believe that uh, they are the side who've got, yeah, Onyakuru, who we sold to them. So a familiar face returning to play against us. Let's hope that he doesn't do too well against us on the night. We have the home leg first. And then, of course, that important away leg. I'm not sure what kits. I mean, I'll just let him wear the home kit, honestly. So... This is our side. Um, I've gone with strength, tried to make it as strong as possible. There's a few fitness issues on a few players, but ultimately that is the 11 that we're going to try and bring home the uh, the victory with. Um, to be fair, I think we are favourites. So looking hopefully at our first Champions League final with Everton. Let's get into the game. You will have just seen our 11, of course, but here it is again then for you. And that was the substitutions. Or they were the substitutions that we do have to call upon if we want some reinforcements. Vice keeps his spot in goal. It's the usual back four, um, apart from the fact that Aaron Wan-Bissaka's out due to a few fitness issues. So Montiel comes into that spot. But this is the side that we're really looking at now. So, Monaco's 11. We have just seen Onyekuru in that team. They've got um, Nabi, uh, no, sorry, not Nabi Keita. Keita Balde on the bench, the winger. Eduard up front, very good striker at this point. You know what? I'm not going to read too much into the teams because they've got themselves through to the semi-final. But I do feel like, in terms of who we've already played against that this isn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be on paper. But like I said, let me reassure you that um, I can't disrespect the Met by any means. They will pose a very tough test. So let's not give them anything in this first leg. Here is Mounts through for Romelu Lukaku. Inside the area goes down, penalty kick surely. I mean, that's the worst start Monaco could have asked for. That's of course <laughs> relying on us scoring the penalty. But that's not a good start. And Kappa's immediately booked for the challenge. I mean, if you look at this as well, Lukaku does buy it. You can see he takes a touch away from Kappa. Just walks into the slide tackle. When you go to ground like that, you're basically asking for that. So I've got no idea what Kappa was thinking. Lukaku is the man who looks like he wants to take this penalty. Of course, save one against Messi, against Barcelona. Can he now score one against Monaco's goalkeeper? Romelu Lukaku steps up for us. And slots home the opening goal of this first leg. It's only been five minutes, but Everton up by a goal to nil. Now, admittedly, I wasn't really bothered about scoring here. I was more bothered about, of course, keeping them to zero goals. Our plan doesn't change, but that's a nice position to be in after only five minutes. Lukaku never in doubt, was it really? Never in doubt. Fantastic finish from our number nine. And that is what I can only describe as the dream start. But we have to keep going. There's still a long, long way to go. And we don't want to give Monaco an inch. Lovely play. And Mason Mount finds Vinicius Jr. Lays it one more to Richarlison. Richarlison for number two. And Everton are in cruise control after 15 minutes here at Goodison Park. 
The play was brilliant. You probably won't see it all because there were so many passes that we built from the back. But Mason Mount's pass through. Vinicius Junior, first time, feeds Richarlison. And the Brazilian applies the finish. Monaco, I'm not sure you've been in a position like this before, but you're going to have to find a solution. Otherwise, this could be done right here in this first leg. It's awful from them the way they started. But to be fair, would anybody at the start of the season... Oh, the keeper gets a touch on that. Would anybody have said that Monaco would reach a semi-final? Possibly not. So we've beaten some big sides on our, on our journey here that realistically you can't look past us as favourites. What a finish that is from Richarlison. But the move itself was so nice to carp, um, to carp open the Monaco side. I will say they, they tried to go on the attack and it just didn't work for them. Caught on the counter, you could say. And immediately have kickoff. Onyekiru puts the ball in. Sanchez easily heads it away. And yet again, we're so calm in the way we play our way out. Lukaku with the ball at his feet. Richarlison again going to make that move. Vinicius Jr. might get in behind again. Oh, it's the ball's there. But it's just too much pace on it from Richarlison. But again, you saw how easy that was. Monaco just fall asleep at the back. Oh, what has just happened here then? Oh, Vice. Oh, why do you do this to me, Vice? on your career as well isn't it oh he sold him to Monaco and he's come back to haunt us it's an away goal for Monaco but it's come from nowhere which is why I wasn't even commentating I just thought there's no chance this even goes in it's a throw in here headers down on your career takes a touch goes for the smash and that is poor goalkeeping from Vice honestly he should save it he really should save it it's that jump though again oh it's Meg Dim you've got to be kidding me I think we get Lunin back in for the second leg I mean I know I'm very harsh on my goalkeepers when they make a mistake, but that's inexcusable. That should have been a routine save for, uh, for Vice. And Onyekuru gets his seventh Champions League goal of the campaign. And a lifeline for Monaco from their first chance on goal. Torreira to Richarlison. Richarlison pulling it back to the core. Blocked in the box. And luckily for Monaco, they survive. Abdelaida Core has got the finishing ability. But instead, this time, smashes it straight against one of the Monaco players. Torreira, what a pass that is. And now Montiel can carry forward. Montiel in towards the box. Richarlison straight at the goalkeeper. Half-time whistle looming. And honestly, we're leading at the break 2-1. But when you consider the fact that Monaco have had one single shot and they scored that, we've had eight in this first half. And it remains 2-1 at half-time. Henry Onyekuru got the goal. That uh, was enough for Monaco to have a lifeline. There you go. Ah, uh, still can't believe it. Megged our goalkeeper. It's really not good when you consider that. It should have been a routine save. Still, we can't let that get to us because it only means now we have to go over to France and possibly score once. This now is Vinicius Jr. in a really good area. Puts the cross in. Richarlison again off the post. Lukaku taps home. Everton 3, Monaco 1. Slightly fortunate with the rebound. Richarlison hitting the post off of the first effort. And I'm going to be honest, I wasn't even controlling Lukaku when he shot that because I didn't even press for him to do it. So I'm so glad the game took over there. Lukaku finds our third of the evening. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's a big, big goal. Put it that way. Lovely delivery from Vinicius Jr. Should have scored there, Richarlison. He's had a couple of moments tonight where he should have scored. But uh, Lukaku on hand. Oh, if you remember last episode, he missed, he missed an open goal. So... Thankfully, not this time when it's mattered. 3-1 Everton. And we now have a two-goal advantage. But I still do not want to give Monaco any more goals from this game. I'll be quite happy if it stays 3-1. Coman. Tierney makes a good run down the left-hand side. 23 minutes to go. Kieran Tierney's ball. Punched away by the goalkeeper. And flicked on for Monaco. But they are just trying to survive what could be a massive, massive fourth goal here. And it's going to be found here. Mason Mount inside the area. Lovely ball. Mount across the face of goal. Coman. 4-1 Everton. And that might be the nail in the coffin for AS Monaco and their Champions League final hopes. 21 minutes to remain here. I said that could have been the chance that we were going to find that fourth goal. And that is it. Really, really good work though by Mason Mount. You can see he continues his run. Richarlison easy ball in towards him. But look at this composure to then pull it back. And Kingsley Coman completely unmarked. Fires in the finish. 4-1. Game set and match. I honestly don't think Monaco can do it even with a second leg coming up. Oh, there it is though. As Davis has smashed home. Monaco back in the tie. It's, it's, a, bit of a, it's a bit of an annoyance really. 
Vice has only had two things to do all evening, and he hasn't done either, you know. This one's a much better finish, though. I will hand it to uh, to Davis, I think. Um, you have to say, I don't even think Lunin would have saved it. But, yeah, Vice has had two shots to face. We've given away literally two shots all night. And he's not really done much for either one of the two. It's a really good finish, though, from Davis. And uh, he does make it 4-2. Two away goals now for Monaco to play with. So that would mean, of course, 2-0 back at their ground will be enough. But I really do think we'll score over in France. I don't think they'll be able to... Um, I don't think they'll be able to, to keep us quiet all evening long. So I'm still feeling pretty confident about things when we go over there. Charleston, what a ball that is. Montial again. Montial, Lukaku, big save from the keeper. Absolutely massive. Lukaku was there for the tap and he's not going to get it. And that should be full time then here from Goodison Park. Everton 4, Monaco 2 in the first leg of the Champions League semi-finals. I'd like to say the job is all but done. But you don't know what's going to happen in the second leg. After all, we never could have predicted what happened for us against Barcelona. So uh, I'm feeling very, very good about things. But we'll see how that one pans out later on in the day. I mean, you can see two shots on target for Monaco and they scored two goals. Oh, man. On another day, they wouldn't have got any and we'd have been 4-0 winners. So it is what it is. But up next, Leicester City in the league, of course. This is our time to secure our Premier League title. All we've got to do is not lose. Um... And hope that Man United don't win pretty much and we are champions. So I'll see you all in a second for that game. Title deciding day. As you can see, I've got goal news switched on for Manchester United. So hopefully we will be updated whenever there's a goal scored at Old Trafford. They're, play they're playing Cardiff though. So I'm pretty sure that they will win that game. Um, I have been playing five minutes as there's only three games to go today. But with this one being pretty meaningless other than of course trying to secure I call it meaningless and we could win the title here what am I talking about um, but yeah uh, in the aspect that if we don't win the party's just halted for another another game really um, Tierney will be I hope continuing this game I do need him though for Monaco but I want him to lift the trophy so that's why he's out there he's our captain of course but off we go then all we've got to do is draw this and we are league champions regardless of what happens at Old Trafford but of course, I'll try and keep you updated as best I can what's going on over there, just in case. And then come the 90 minutes, hopefully the title will be ours. Leicester doing pretty well in the league right now. They find themselves in the top eight. Jack Button in goal for them. Back four that involves Serge Aurier and Benkovic as well. Into the midfield, though, Sarabia, Mendy and Lanetti line up as the midfield three. Up front, Uth, Iheanacho and Harvey Barnes as well. I'm a big, big fan of Harvey Barnes. think he's absolutely quality. So hopefully he doesn't have a good game against me, but... We will line up in our blue, Leicester City in their white and blue. And uh, fingers crossed, come 90 minutes, we are the happier of the two parties. But do keep tabs though. Hopefully the goal news works so we can keep up to date on what's going on over at Old Trafford. I've not really used it too often, mainly because I've never really thought it worked. But I've tried it here, we'll see how it goes. Do remember though, a goal here for us would pretty much throw Manchester United onto the ropes and mean they have to attack. Um, but as it stands, Leicester City not really looking to attack at us. They're quite content, sat behind the ball, trying to soak up pressure. So uh, I think this might just be a draw written all over it and are securing it for a draw, even though that will feel like it's not our title. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just got to take these. And the way Leicester have set up suggests to me that they're not that bothered about having a go at this game. Fast approaching this half-time whistle. The uh, possession stats just popped up. We have had 70% of possession in this first half alone. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up for us. Orsic now on the ball, looking for Adamola Lukman. We're into the last minute of additional time as Broadhead's going to be found. Going to have to get the shot away here, though, because the halftime whistle was coming. And there it is then. Nil-nil at the break. 70% of possession. Leicester yet to register a meaningful shot. Their only shot in the game was straight at our goalkeeper. There's a, there's a theme here. Look at, look at that possession stat. They literally just sat content behind the ball. They're not that bothered. I still haven't seen anything happening elsewhere, though, with Manchester United, so I don't know what's going on there, but a point is enough for us anyway, so, yeah, just keep doing what we're doing then. Two minutes to go, and how fitting would this be? A Patrick free kick to seal the title. Butland's so central again, though, so, I mean, what are we going to do from this position? Can Patrick find the finish? It's over the wall, and Jack Butland, who'd started his position off so central, just catches it, and that was pretty much in the corner as well from Patrick, so I really don't know why goalkeepers do that so centrally, but... It works, and there was uh, there will be well there will be no goal in the game. Put it that way, as time ticks away here. Everton nil, Leicester City nil, from Goodison Park. Everton will be champions, but it's in the most underwhelming fashion you could ask for. 
but at least we can enjoy it. important because Manchester United absolutely smashed Cardiff. Now we didn't see any of those goal updates so I still stand by the fact that it, I don't think it works. Unless you have to have the commentary on of course. I don't because it would uh, it would override me so I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've tried to use it. Didn't seem to pop up at any point during the match and there was five goals so it should have popped up at least once. Nevertheless, that's the title in the bag. Now we've won the La Liga, we've won the Eredivisie, and now we've won the Premier League. But let's face it, this is the moment we're waiting for. I have absolutely no idea why Kingsley Coman is piping up about his playtime at the club. Because he is, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I was not off. What is not currently given to me? Let's check this out, shall we? Because I'm pretty damn sure he's one of the highest appearance makers at the club. We'll find this out. And here is where I look stupid, because it's going to prove me wrong, isn't it? Appearances. 39. 39 appearances is the highest appearance maker out of everybody who we have played on the wing. What are you talking about? What is he talking about? Look, when we're 25. Vinicius Jr., I know he hasn't been here that long. He's only been here since January, but... I mean, come on. 39 appearances, and you're telling me that that's not good enough? I think you need a little bit of a head check, mate. But anyway, we'll... Uh, we'll let that slide as we have this second leg. I need to switch up the, uh, the team a little bit. But ultimately, it's going to be, hopefully, our strongest 11. And let's hope for lots of action in our favour for this one to make up for the poor game against Leicester. Now, I've uh, made a bit of a risky decision. Richarlison is playing central midfield for us tonight. Um, Decore had fitness issues from that last game. Even Tierney's not looking the best in terms of that. So, uh, this is the 11 we're going to go with. Obviously, Monaco, they are the team behind. They have to go for it for us. A 0-0 would be enough, pretty much. Even a 1-0 defeat would be enough. 2-0, not so much. They go through and they go running. And I said that I'm confident we'll score over in France. Let's see if that is going to be the case. So it will be Monaco to get us underway for this one then. A massive night for them. And you may notice as well, Lunen's back in. Vice does not keep that spot after that first leg. I won't call it a mistake, but I, can't, I don't even know what to call it, to be fair. Um, let's call it mishap, shall we? Uh, but still, Monaco need to do the job tonight. And this could be a big start if they can get a goal here in Lunen. I won't go as far as calling him safe hands Lunen. But the first thing he's had to do, he's actually done it all right. So that's a positive note. If we could get a goal early doors, that would really, really kick them in the teeth a little bit. Richarlison, that deeper central midfield role tonight. Interesting to see how he plays there. Coman's ball out wide towards t and &E. t and &E picks it up, finds Mason Mount. Mount now will turn and find Vinicius Jr. Jr. towards Lukaku. Lukaku back to Torreira. 
Look at all of the bodies back that Monaco have got. Richarlison and Mount combined. Back to Richarlison. Lovely little turn. Richarlison. And that is the goal we were looking for. The Brazilian does it again. Monaco nil Everton won. We scored this early, didn't we? Back at our place from that penalty kick. We don't need a penalty this time. One away goal added to the collection. I did say we'd score in France. It's only taken us seven minutes. And it's Richarlison who's got it. It's poor from Monaco. You'd think with all that, uh, you know, support back for them, they'd have closed this down a lot sooner. They didn't. Richarlison makes them pay. Get in. Brilliant Everton play again as Montiel's in this right-hand side. Sends the cross in. Vinicius Junior for 2-0. That's it. Champions League final awaits. This has been the dream start. Monaco, I'm sorry. You didn't have enough. I've got to be honest. Out of all the Champions League sides we face this season... They just don't seem to be up to the same sort of standard. I'm surprised we even got through against Barcelona when we did. I mean, it was a crazy game and everybody's going to look back at that game and say that's the part we should have lost. That's the part that we realistically should have gone out in. And as we score for a second time, Monaco's hard work at Goodison Park to grab those two away goals is completely undone. I'm not even going to get ahead of myself because we have to remain composed. We have a massive job now on our hands in that Champions League final to do the double the league title, the Champions League final. This is what uh, the Everton fans were dreaming of. And hopefully we can be the manager that brings them it. I mean, there's still, there's still time in the game. But Monaco have to score five now to, uh, to take them through. So will they score five? Will we really give away? F I mean, wait a second. On your Kira's in. Whoa, Lunen saves it. I, j I don't see them scoring five. Oh, Rabio off the bar. Schuller's header's in. Why is it we do this to ourselves? As soon as I say I don't see them scoring five, they get a goal straight after. Monaco. I mean, again though, again. Should we have cleared our lines? Should we have cleared this? The first header's won by Rabio. He probably should score it initially. Oh, it's just unfortunate. It looks like it's bounced off TNE straight into the path of Serla. And he's headed in the, uh, the rebound. Yeah, it's TNE's left leg. It's come off him, and, and it's not the best header in the world, I will say that. I'm not sure he meant to go that close to putting it wide, but for Monaco, I don't think they'll care. Lukaku, what a ball that is. And Vinicius Jr.'s in again. Vinicius Jr. for number three. It's meant to be a shot. It's going to come from out to finish it. It's 3-1 Everton, but that is appalling for Vinicius Jr. I swear they patched the driven shot that if you mistime it by even like an OK margin, it just doesn't work. Doesn't seem to be the same. But anyway, it's a poor shot that's actually worked out because it's gone to Mason Mount and he's made it three to Everton. 7-3 on aggregate. 10 goals in only like 120 minutes of football. It's insane. We didn't go through with that swap deal when we, uh, we had it on the table. Is Eduard's going to score a second for Monaco then? Defending. What's that? What's that? I don't know what that is. Doesn't seem to be even in the game at the moment. Seems like we just love to score goals and concede them. It's all about outscoring your opponent. That's the way we play FIFA at the minute. 11 goals in, well, not even three halves of football because we've still got eight or so minutes to go here in this first half. To be fair, tonight, I don't know if it's been a great performance or not. We are winning, but if you look at us defensively, we are going to have to be a lot better in that final. And uh, there's been times tonight where we have looked a little bit shaky. So hopefully we can get that out of our system ahead of that final. But as the time ticks away, Monaco have tried, but they are not going to succeed, it doesn't seem like here. And we will be heading towards a massive tie, hopefully, in which we will come away victors. That's poor. Lukaku now will find Junior, hopefully he will. Vinicius Junior to finish it off. There is the fourth of the night. Eight minutes left. 4-8 on aggregate. 12 goals. Pretty much the last attack of the game here as Vinicius Junior goes through, looking for another one. It's number five for Everton. It's number nine on aggregate. And there you go. Champions League final awaits. We've nearly made it to double figures on aggregate score, which is just pure insanity. Vinicius Jr. finishes off. We're going to need him definitely in that final. And I tell you what, Richarlison's had a very good game in that central midfield role. So maybe I have to reconsider putting him there ahead of that final. I might actually do it again. So we'll see. And I mean, Monaco, you can see there that sort of pass. And they've just pretty much given up. And there might be a chance for one more goal. Kingsley Coman finds his way through. Oh, he's done it as well. It's 6-2 Everton. <laughs> what? I mean, the referee should have just blown the whistle, but he didn't. It's 10-4 on aggregate. Kingsley Coman, fantastic finish. I want to see this again, how he actually does reach this ball and finish it. Because I thought he was second favourite to getting it. 
Maybe that'll um, stop him talking about his playtime. What a ball over it was from Richard Jr. as well. Straight in behind, and Kingsley Coleman volleys it home. 6-2. I feel very harsh on Monaco because this hasn't really been 6-2 game. But they've, uh, they haven't really shown up on either occasion. So, Champions League final weights. Who are we going to play? Let's find out. So we'll skip a few days into the future, see who it's going to be. I know Chelsea and PSG are the other game going on, and I'm pretty sure Chelsea won the first leg 2-0. So let's see who it's going to be in the Champions League final four. As drum roll, please. Champions League draw has been made, and it will be PSG. What? Chelsea were 2 0 up after the first leg, and PSG managed to win 3-1 at Stamford Bridge to take them through on the away goal ruling. Wow. PSG await us in the final of the Champions League then. That's going to be some tie. I honestly expected it to be Chelsea. I'm not going to lie. So fair play to them. But again, it's going to be French opposition. And that's not the league I want. There it is. PSG are currently fourth in the French league. Lyon topping it. Lille in second and Monaco third. PSG, what kind of side have they got? We'll check that out before we go. I want to see if they've uh, you know, still got the, the big players in their team. If not... We could well be favourites for this game. So PSG, Pickford has been starting in goal for them in the Champions League, 88 rated. And Aki Williams has been starting alongside Marcus Rashford, 85 and 90 rated. So some quality players there. And Mbappe still at the club, 95 overall. He looks stupidly good. Neymar as well, 92. That attack is unbelievable. Pogba and Artur in there as well, 91 and 90 um, relate, um, rated too. Vendel is 86. I mean, Dagba, he's not a great right back, though. That could be where we really do look to attack against them. Theo Hernandez, 85 overall. What centre-backs have they got? Marquinhos at 90 rated. Yerry Mina and Nicholas Stark are the two that seem to be sharing game time at the moment. They have an incredible attack, PSG. So if we couldn't keep Monaco quiet from scoring, how are we going to keep Anaki Williams, <laughs> Marcus Rashford, Mbappe and Neymar quiet from scoring? Wow. Nevertheless, my friends, that brings us to the end of today's episode. A massive thank you for watching it. If you have enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated. Of course, in the next episode, I'll be skipping through the final two games of the Premier League season as we are champions now. And we will be playing the Champions League final on its own as a big bumper game for you to enjoy. So make sure, if you're not already subscribed, you've hit that button below because you won't want to miss it. Watching Mbappe and Neymar tear us to shreds on either side of PSG's attack. That's going to be so tough to deal with. But hopefully we can come out on top. Do leave your vote on the poll as well. Who would you start in that final? Lunen or Vice? Who gets your nod as our number one goalkeeper for that one? But I'm excited to give you it. And I'll see you all for that. Hopefully in the next couple of days, if not tomorrow. Then have a fantastic evening. And I'll see you all again soon. Adios.